Hi guys, welcome to the next video and in this video I will talk about the Tableau's internal machine learning algorithm. So one of the very first algorithm we will see is the clustering algorithm and as it is mentioned over here, it is an unsupervised un algorithm where we are not sure about whether data has any patterns and by using the cluster clustering algorithms we try to figure out cluster or groups that has similar characteristics. So what I'm showing you right now here is uh, some group of data sets or data actually into the data set all these data points which you can see have been highlighted with blue, red and green color and this is basically an example of uh, cluster. So you have uh, let's say a data set and you are not much aware about the data set and you are running an algorithm the clustering algorithm to identify the similar groups you know the characteristics which has uh, similarity uh, among those groups so we have like three groups and green is basically indicating that all of these values which is surrounded by you know surrounded the center of this uh, data set or the data point is actually similar same is the case with the uh, blue as you can see there is a quite a bit of difference in terms of distance as you can see so that's basically a base of a clustering algorithm within the Tableau and the, the algorithm that they use is k-means clustering. So if you want to know more about the k-means clustering, the distance-based clustering, you can uh, google it. It's, it's uh, pretty straightforward based on the central point which they call centroid. They basically see within the close proximity what are those values which are coming and based on that they label it as a one cluster like in this case red cluster and so that's how they keep on identifying the new centroid and the new values and they keep on doing the clustering so that's about the technicality about how it identify the center point and based on the distance it you know check all the labels and if it goes beyond the distance you know it, it does not identify so for example these black points if you would see since they are going beyond a certain point of distance they have not been identified as any of the uh, associated with any of the cluster so that's much about theory let's go into the practical and uh, before i go i'll show you the data set and the data set that i have is the iris data set it has uh, four numerical variables sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width and these are the uh, species of flowers if I show you Setosa, Versicolor and Virginica. So this data set was created long back somewhere around sometime in 18th century and uh, it's basically to study the different types characteristics which these different species uh, exhibit. So we will get this and we will just uh, assume that we do not know about these species we are just uh, having this data set these four variables and we try to cluster uh, create three clusters since there are three but uh, we'll see how we can use the cluster algorithm and create such a cluster that will identify these three species all right let's go ahead into the tableau here i have the tableau open and what i'll do is click on the text file and here I am on the desktop and I am using the iris data. What I will do is, uh, uh, there are two ways to get this data set. One is the UCI machine learning library. You can search it in a Google. So it is UCI machine learning library and there you will get the data set. Even if you search it with the iris data set on the Google, you will very easily get it. Although I can just upload it uh, on a Google Drive and share the link in the description. Okay, so here we are with the sepal and sepal width, petal and petal width and species. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, hide this. I don't need this. And I'll move on to the sheet. Okay, here I am on the sheet. And uh, I will create a scatter plot with the sum of this, this. And uh, what I can do is for clustering algorithm, I'll just remove this. Uh, aggregate measure as as soon as I removed it as you can see you know uh, we have this uh, this these petal length petal width and all these uh, data points uh, related to the species are plotted over here now uh, if you want to see the species what you can do is put a color on it 
and we can clearly see that uh, these blue is one type of species like Setosa. Another one is the versicola which is having orange but as you can see near to orange you have some red color also which is Virginica and then down up to the top you have Virginica as a uh, as a species. So what I'll do is I'll just remove this and uh, with the help of clustering algorithm we will try to see whether uh, this pattern is identified with the uh, clustering algorithm or not. So I'm here on the analytics and uh, if I go ahead and drop the cluster over here right with the petal length and petal width you will see that uh, it has by default identified the cluster 1, 2, 3 automatically and cluster 1 is over here very similar to our original data set cluster 2 is over here again very very similar but if you remember down here or somewhere here we had some red marks so in, in this case it has predicted almost accurately but not 100% accurate accuracy with 100% accuracy and on top of that you have the red color which is a cluster 3 so that's very very quickly how you can create the clustering algorithm and this is also called unsupervised algorithm why unsupervised is because you do not know anything about data so for example if we did not have these species we would have to experiment with the cluster like one two three how many cluster we really want and then if you know it uh, gives us some sort of idea that yeah these clusters make sense because they represents the similar nature you know we would have gone ahead and used it so that's that's very quickly about uh, how you can implement the clustering algorithm now another interesting piece is once you have created this what you can do is uh, you can use this cluster over here in the uh, as a dimension so that you can use it uh, maybe later in the stage for further analysis that's pretty straightforward way if I just go ahead and drop it over here it will create uh, based on the petal length and petal width it, it is going to give the cluster so maybe we can say it is species cluster now we have this cluster and as you can see this paperclip sign which indicates that it is basically creating a group so once it is added over here you can you have the option of either creating duplicate or even added the group so let's go ahead and edit the group and let's say you want to change the you know cluster name so you can click on the cluster name and uh, I think first was Setosa second was uh, Virginica and uh, third one is uh, I don't really remember that okay but idea is that uh, you can rename it and you can let's say say Setosa and uh, we will say second one we were Chimica and I'll just see what is the third one versicolor maybe third one is versicolor okay and with that I'm done so that's how you can change the groups uh, so whenever you will get these groups over here this these names will be changed uh, the cluster names will be changed and that will be more business friendly name as compared to simply cluster now after this uh, you what you can do is you can further experiment since there is no limitation or it's simply based on how much you can really think and you can combine with petal length and sepal length or petal width and sepal width and try to see whether you are getting more and more accuracy the only thing is um, not I would suggest that do not even try to get 100% of accuracy first of all that's not possible even after a lot of manipulation a lot of experiment if you even get it that will lead to one of the problem in data science which is called overfitting that means you are overly manipulating overly simplifying the data which may work well when uh, you have some you know seen data or you are aware about it but on unseen data it will never gonna work I would say not never but most of the time it will not gonna work okay so that's about cluster uh, what you can do is uh, it is also very important that you identify that how many values it has calculated right and wrong 
So what you can do is create a calculated field and uh, basically say uh, maybe accuracy. Yeah, that's what they say in data science, accuracy. And what it is is basically species cluster is equals to species. Okay. And uh, what I can do is I can create another sheet and I will just say uh, accuracy on the column so it has false but it should have shown us true as well so let me quickly go back and check uh, edit species cluster okay equals to, equals to species and okay and what I'll do is just one quick check is I'll just create one sheet I will say beta length Peter width. I will remove the aggregate measure. I'm sorry about that. Peter width. And then uh, based on species, I'll put it on color. Setosa, versicola, virginica. And that's our actual data. And uh, here, if I go ahead and remove the cluster or simply remove it over here and put it species cluster over here and setosa virginica versicola i'm just checking the ordering so setosa versicola i think that's we should have the same naming convention otherwise since it is equals to equals to it is checking whether it is true or false so in small case setosa versicola and virginica and I will just go ahead in the cluster, edit the group, rename. So first one is Setosa, which is in small. Second one is uh, Virginica. And I need to check, I'll check once again and versicola v e r s i v e r i s c o l okay um setosa virginica versicola setosa okay i just need to have versicola as the second one so that's sometimes you may not get the correct output and uh, you need to really see whether values are properly you know mentioned over here so i will name it to versicola otherwise you will get more false than right and which is not right okay and let's see this i'll just remove that edit species cluster equals to equals to species I will come here now we have true and false both so that's good um, and uh, to basically get the count what we need to do is bring another you know field over here which is nothing but number of records okay so we have uh, 52 is false and 90 is as true again doesn't seems to me something which is absolutely correct maybe I'm just missing up messing up with the you know the naming over here so if I go um, like VIR right so this this will create an issue what I'm doing is VER I'm saying however it is VIR GINICA VIR so I'll just what I'll do is I'll go down and copy this so that I'm not messing up more with that added group come here and rename no not the one this one this one rename so we are good over here and then versicola I'll just check once more I'll go up and V E R S I C O L yeah I'm good away so I'll click OK as soon as I click OK, let me see the count. So now you can see, now it is as per my expectation that 
only six incorrect values which it has uh, classified or clustered wrong however true is 144 what we can do is create a bar chart so with that and it should have come um, bar chart okay so with that uh, you can see or you can visualize give the visualization back to your users about uh, the accuracy part how much is the accuracy and third thing is you can combine all of this into a cool dashboard so let's go ahead and create that to complete this entire information so new dashboard we are bringing the sheet one which is our okay so I will just remove one all right okay so we'll give sheet one name as uh, ml which is machine learning cluster real values and accuracy okay and here i'm coming so this is the ml cluster clearly indicating this is the real value and as you can see here in case of this orange and this is red so this is a misclassification after that uh, we can produce a plot of uh, you know accuracy as well and we can see that we have more true number as compared to false so there is a reason that you can trust our algorithm so that's about it uh, but as I said it's just one single way or one way of uh, thinking about it there are a number of ways by which you can think and you can uh, you know further improve it by, by our dashboard or something so that's the first video that I have. I will show you a couple of more examples in coming days related to clustering so that you will get a better idea and uh, more data to play with.